Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Amen. God is worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord, for you are faithful. You're a just God. You're a holy God. You are just so full of mercy. And when we at the end of our rope, you're always there to rescue us. We thank you that you are such an awesome God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. We give you glory. Worthy are you. Worthy are you to be praised. Well, glory to God. I want to, first of all, say thank you for all the support. Thank you for joining in. And may you be blessed. We're going to speak about the God of progress. We serve a God of progress. Think about this. In Egypt, God's first deliverer was Moses to bring the Israelites out. Then we serve, or as we serve a God of progress, he has another deliverer to deliver us, not from Egypt this time, but from those who could not get Egypt out of themselves. So now we have another deliverer called Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He became our Egypt. He became our sin. He became our uh, condemnation. And whilst we were still sinners, God bless you, Susan, bless you, and Fanny and family. And whilst we were still sinners, Jesus Christ took our sin upon himself. So we serve a God of progress. The first deliverer was Moses and to get the Israelites out of Egypt. And now God had to get Egypt out of, <laughs> out of his people. So he sent Jesus Christ so that we can go to the promised land of righteousness, peace, and joy. The promised land is not a geographical location. You know, uh, for instance, like some people will say, I've heard, uh, well, I need to go to uh, Israel, to Jerusalem, so that I can be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Well, that is not uh, uh, that is not true. You can be baptized with the Holy Spirit right in your house, in your bathroom, wherever you are. You don't have to go to a certain geographical location, especially Israel, to be filled in with the Holy Spirit. All right, we serve a God of progress. I want you to see this now. In the Old Testament, under the law, People chose a sacrifice, an animal to be slaughtered. The God of progress in the New Testament did not give the people an opportunity to choose the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ was chosen as God's Lamb by God, the Father himself. Under the law, they killed the sacrifice, that animal, for the sins of the people to take the blood and apply it uh, uh, to the, uh, 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 you know, the different, uh, the mercy seat or the different things in a tabernacle. Uh, I want to just try and keep it very simplistic. And uh, they killed the sacrifice. But we serve a God of progress. In the New Testament, Nobody could kill God's lamb except Jesus Christ laying down his own life. He said, no one can take my life. No one except me laying it down. Now watch the God of progress in the Old Testament under the law of legalism. That sacrifice stayed dead. But under grace, God progresses. We serve a God of progress. He's always on the move. God is on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move. <laughs> okay. 
So Jesus Christ, as God's sacrifice, as the Lamb of God, did not stay dead, but he was raised. He rose from the dead after three days. Glory to God. That is right. We might as well just give him some praise. Amen. You see, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the sacrifice stayed dead. In the New Testament, after three days, Jesus rose as God's perfect sacrifice, taking his blood to heaven. And now boldly you and I can enter. So we serve a God of progress. Let me give you a scripture. Philippians 1.25 And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. Hallelujah. So the scripture there, uh, you know, the Bible tells us that it was more beneficial for the soul to, for somebody to remain. God connects you with somebody. God connects you with somebody to remain in your life. God connects you with Jesus Christ. God connects you with those that he has chosen around you to connect you for your progress. Now, we don't always like progress. God bless you, Jennifer. God bless you. Amen. Amen. The God of progress. So now, you and I, God wants us to progress. And the only way that you and I will progress, are you ready for this? <laughs> Here it comes. Are you ready? He's going to allow you to meet with Mr. or Mrs. or brother or sister sandpaper. Sandpaper. God bless you, Latrice. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. All of you. Is it Thomas? Hallelujah. That these wonderful people, they were used by God to train me in the media. And I give God all the glory for the two of you. Okay, now let me get back here. So God wants us to progress. So there is a Mr. or Mrs. Sandpaper. And you know, sandpaper is going to rub against you, upset you, maybe offend you, or maybe you're going to just not be happy with somebody. But that is to show you where you need to grow in life. If you never bump into something that is, uh, that is going to wrong you or rub you uh, the wrong way around, or that's going to provoke you. If you never, if you never connect or bump into things like that, how will you know that your character is strong enough to forgive and to let go and to let God have his way? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen and amen. You may as well just shout glory to God. I know. Uh, as somebody one day said, you know what? Uh, it, life will be so much better without people. Does that mean that you talking about yourself as well? Having to remove yourself? The only way we are going to grow in life, the only way that we, Tommy, there you go. Yes, uh, that's the person who trained me. Yes, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. And the only way that you and I are going to be strong and get stronger and grow and progress if we discover what is hidden inside of our hearts. Now somebody says, give me a scripture. Sure, in Deuteronomy 8, the Bible says, God led the Israelites into the desert, yeah, to, and uh, uh, allow them to be tested 
so that they could find out what was in their hearts. Let me just go there uh, briefly. Deuteronomy uh, chapter 8, and let me just go there. Hallelujah. It says, uh, uh, let me just go there, verse 1. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe it. And so on, you will multiply, you will go in and possess the land, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you uh, all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not, etc., etc., God will permit us to be led into circumstances to test, are we humble enough? Are we humble enough to forgive? Are we humble enough to say to that person very politely, excuse me, uh, what do you mean by what you have just said? Because... Uh, it is a little provoking or I feel a little bit upset. And just in case I have misunderstood you, please explain to me why or what made you say that. See, now you're giving that person another opportunity to release to you what is needed for your hearing. Because sometimes we listen, but we don't hear. <laughs> I was, uh, 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 you know, watching uh, Dolly Parton, uh, Dolly Parton, what uh, Parton, uh, Dolly Parton, uh, and uh, on her show, Christmas show, she was saying, "You get those who will always listen, but they don't hear." And so we need to be very cautious that we not just listen for the sake of how we want to interpret, but we must hear what the person is saying. So we serve a God of progress. Think about this. Think about this. In the Old Testament, you get the Levitical priesthood. Look at the God of progress. Are you ready? In the New Testament, we now are all a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we serve a God of progress. In fact, the Bible says uh, that we must grow or move from glory to glory. That means from one degree of Christ-like character to another, to another degree of Christ-like character. The Apostle Paul puts it this way. He says, I press on towards a higher mark of fulfillment. Let me just bring that up here. I'm just looking up that scripture. Uh, scripture, Philippians 3. It should be uh, there by 14 or so. Let me just see. All right. Uh, let's start off with verse 13. Philippians 3, 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. That means I don't count myself having arrived. You and I are on a spiritual GPS destination. And during this journey towards eternity, there's sometimes going to be a flat tire, a wrong thought. <laughs> sometimes we need to change the oil of our vehicle, our spiritual vehicle. That's right. We need to change some of the oil of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And we need to go into God's spiritual service station and uh, receive a tune-up. A tune-up. Maybe there's some emotion. Maybe there's a thought pattern that is not renewed and that's easily provoked. So the Apostle Paul says, Philippians 3, uh, 13, he says, I forget those things which are behind me. Glory to God. And reaching forward, that means progressing. I'm reaching, I press on towards a higher mark of fulfillment. Beloved, think about this. 
Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I have, uh, God says, I've got plans for you, not to harm you, nor to hurt you, to give you hope and a future. Now pause and think. God is more focused on your future. God never consults our past to determine our future. There will always be somebody in your past or even in your yesterday or even in your today that you might be rubbed the wrong way around and you feel like blessing them with a, I'm not going to say with a brick. <laughs> no, we must bless our enemies, okay? But not with a brick. All right. So, uh, uh, you now on the spiritual journey and God is more interested in our character than in how much right we can be or almost wrong we can be. It's not how much right I am or how much almost wrong I am. It's all about how strong is the love of God not to break that unity with a brother or a sister or to stay connected with those immediate family of yours, whether it's uh, your children or your brothers or sisters or to whosoever. You see, God has got nobody else to display or show forth His glory through except you and I. And when people see how we conduct our lives and they then find out or discover or know that you and I serve a loving God, that will convict them. But you see, if we pay uh, a wrong for a wrong, you know, an eye for an eye, that is under the law of legalism. I will, it's like always pointing a finger God progressed from that and he put an end to that legalistic religious spirit. Yeah. And he says, I've not come to abandon the law, but to fulfill it. The law was a set of rules, regulations. It's like some people say, well, uh, you know, you must read your Bible an hour a day. Well, what happens if I only at a half an hour time, but I was totally into it, and I didn't just read the Bible, I allowed the Word of God to read me. See? But just because, uh, you know, uh, I have not prayed for an hour today, doesn't mean I must now go under condemnation. That's what a set of rules and regulations do to people. It binds them. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. There is freedom. And that's why Jesus Christ came. Because we serve a God of progress. God took us further than where we were at when we discovered how real God is. See? And he takes us from faith to faith. He takes us from little to much to overflowing. We serve a God of progress. You come and you confess Jesus as Savior. But then there's progress. Jesus now must become Lord. There's progress from Savior to his Lordship. Then Jesus wants to be the living Christ, the Christos, the anointed one in your life. Now, for you to move from the Lordship of Jesus to becoming one in Christ, you've got to lose your head. <laughs> Nobody gets into that most holy place with your own mind. You can only go in there through the mind of Christ. I'm just about to finish with this broadcast, okay? <laughs> so, so we have to lose our head and allow him to position his head onto us. Remember, uh, this one person said to Jesus, uh, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus kind of, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me. 
Do you understand that foxes have got holes, the birds of the air, they have nests? But the Son of Man, here it comes, are you ready? Has no place to position his head. See? Jesus wants to position his head on his body. You are his body. And he wants to position his head onto your shoulders so that you will have the mind of Christ by renewing your thoughts and accepting the new you in you looking for you. That's right. See, unless we allow our minds, our thought patterns to become renewed, you will never discover the real you. Because the real you is a conqueror. The real you is an overcomer. The real you uh, are seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. You are seated in Christ Jesus. You are seated upon the throne of Jesus because you are in him. And you, are, you have been crowned with every spiritual blessing, glory to God. So you really ruling from above downwards on this earth to below. Some people only want to get to heaven, but God wants to get heaven into you and I. I'm going to close with this. Let me just go back there and just, I just want to summarize briefly. We serve a God of progress. Think about Jesus' birth. A little baby, but the baby started to become a young boy, the young boy became a young man or a teenager, young man, right? And he is, uh, he was born as a child, but he was given as a son. Progress. We serve a God of progress. See, you and I get saved. We go through our baby stages. But then God expects us to start maturing. Hebrews 5, you can read it, you know, and 6. He wants us to mature and move towards better things, greater things. He wants us to mature. Amen? Just remember, there's a yesterday, there's a today, and a tomorrow. Never get stuck in your yesterday's disappointments. Bring your yesterday into today's reality and say, I'm going to deal with this thing because I have a tomorrow to live for. And if I'm miserable today, how am I going to enjoy my tomorrow? God bless you. I pray that this broadcast has reached somebody. Hallelujah. And uh, I pray blessing upon you. May God give you access to all resources to discharge your God-ordained destiny. May God make you a gift to your community, to your family, to your present situation. Hallelujah. And may you be a possessor of the gates of the enemy and go take back what belongs to you and your family rightfully. Never give the enemy territorial influence through unforgiveness, bitterness, or disappointment. Come to God and say, God, I'm going to forgive because you forgave me. God bless you. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Holy kiss. God bless you. Go love somebody. Bye now.